Uh, welcome to the Standing Committee on Social Development. Uh, we're having a briefing on Early Childhood Development Action Plan 2017 to 2020 with the Honourable Glenn Abernathy, Minister of Health and Social Services, and Honourable Alfred Moses, Minister of Education, Culture and Employment. Before we proceed there, uh, we'd like to open up the prayer, and I'll turn to Ms. Green. God of power and might, wisdom and justice, through you authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. Assist us with your spirit of counsel and fortitude. May we always seek the ways of righteousness, justice, and mercy. Grant that we may be enabled by your powerful protection to lead our territory with honesty and integrity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, can I have somebody approve the agenda as presented? Uh, Tom, second by Sonny. A declaration of conflict of interest. Not seen any. Uh, we'll turn to Mr. Moses. So start with opening comments, and then you'll turn it over to Mr. Abernathy. Correct? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon, committee members. I am pleased to be here today to discuss the 2017-2020 Early Childhood Development Action Plan being implemented in partnership with the Department of Health and Social Services. With me today, I have um, Deputy Minister Sylvia Hayner, uh, Rita Mueller, the Assistant Deputy Minister for Education and Culture, Shelley Capralian, the Director of Early Childhood Development and Learning, Ms. Julia Mott, Senior Advisor to the Deputy Minister, and Ms. Mai Lepage, my Special Ministerial Advisor. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, when members of this assembly identified supporting quality early childhood development as one of our priorities, it enabled us to build on the good work already undertaken in this area. The overarching framework and guiding document for early childhood right from the start, a 10-year framework for <coughs> early childhood development in the Northwest Territories, was tabled in June 2013, followed by the first in a series of rolling action plans identifying specific activities. The action plan we'll we will present to you today is another step in enacting the framework and moving us further towards attaining our Assembly's priority. The new three-year action plan for 2017-2020 supports the seven commitments within the framework for early childhood development in the Northwest Territories. The vision of the framework says that children will have the best start in life with supports that allow them to develop to their fullest potential, creating a positive future for themselves, their families, and their communities. The framework aims to provide equitable access to a continuum of inclusive, culturally relevant early childhood development programs, services, and resources for children, parents, families, and communities. The 2017-2020 Early Childhood Development Action Plan reflects this government's commitment to ensure that investments in programs and services are aimed at improving outcomes and early childhood developments in the NWT. We can all agree that early years are critical to creating a strong foundation for children's healthy development. Today's presentation will provide information on the actions we will take to support this government's mandate, as well as our 10-year framework. Mr. Chair, with your permission, our Assistant Deputy Minister will, Ministers will provide you with a joint presentation that offers more details of our plans moving forward. Following the presentation, Minister Abernathy and myself will be happy to answer any questions that members may have. Merci. Thank you, Minister Moses. Minister Abernathy. Thank you, uh, Minister Moses and Mr. Chair. Uh, from the Department of Health and Social Services, I do have a following number of staff with me here today. Debbie Delancey is uh, behind us. She's the Deputy Minister. Uh, Dr. Andre Corvo, the Chief Public Health Officer. Uh, Nina Larson behind us is the Senior Advisor for Early Childhood Development. And as always, uh, Susan Laramie, who's the Ministerial Special Advisor. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have made good progress on a number of the commitments in the original action plan over the past three years, and I'm very excited about the potential to make some meaningful changes for our kids and their families moving forward. Although today's presentation focus, focuses mainly on our proposed actions for the next three years, our staff will highlight some of these achievements. Uh, some of the most notable accomplishments, including providing access to rehabilitation services and participation in early childhood programs through three early childhood intervention pilot projects. Uh, these projects are also providing learning that can be used in, in other regions, which is incredibly important. Uh, we have established a midwifery services in Hay River and an improved maternal care 
program in the Beaufort Delta. And over the next few weeks, uh, we are also engaging members of the public as we work to develop a model for a territorial midwifery program. Uh, we are reviewing the Healthy Family Program to, ter to determine how we can be more effective in reaching at-risk families and how we can expand this program to more communities throughout the Northwest Territories. Uh, even though we have made some progress, obviously there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, I look forward to your committee's comments on the draft action plan um, that we're here presenting today. And Mr. Chair, with your permission, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Dr. Corvo and Ms. Mueller to walk us through the presentation. Thank you, Minister Abernathy. Dr. Corvo. Thank you, Mr. Chair and um, the committee members. Uh, I'll start uh, on the uh, slide number two. Um, we're very pleased to, to come and share our proposed action plan for 2017-20. And um, for your review and comments. Oh, sorry, Dr. Corbin, sorry, I missed something. Um, before I go, I should actually introduce uh, my colleagues. So I'll get them to introduce them. <laughs> Not only did I forget our clerk in my research, I forgot my colleagues this time. Uh, I'll start with Mr. Blake. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Frederick Blake, MLA for McKinley. Tom Boldy, MLA for Tuneda and Willoughby. Danny McNeely, Satu Region. <clears throat> Michael Nagy, <laughs> MLA for Detroit. Julie Green, Yellow Knife Center. Uh, Kevin O'Reilly, Frame Lake. And again, I apologize. Uh, on my left is Megan Welsh, who's our researcher. And on my right, who's normally here, is Doug Showery, and he's our the clerk. So back to Mr. Corvo. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So early childhood development has consistently been uh, identified as one of the single most important determinants of health and well-being, and it as one of the best and most cost-effective areas of, for social investments by governments. In this presentation, we will briefly share information on the progress that has been made to date in the implementation of the framework over the past three years that was undertaken by both departments, um, which has also informed the development of this action plan along with the priorities that were set by the current Legislative Assembly focusing on identified gaps while seeking to maintain or shore up existing actions. There are 19 areas of action in this proposed three-year action plan that are aligned to the original seven commitments made in the framework. Next slide. Uh, one of the priorities of this assembly is supporting quality early childhood development in collaboration with existing organizations. Several deliverables and, and targets in this proposed action plan align very well with the, the mandate commitments and milestones. Within the action plan, the commitments are listed as deliverables throughout the presentation. The next slide uh, shows an overview of the framework itself. The 10-year framework was motivated by the realization uh, that far too many children in the NWT continue to fall below expectations in terms of health and educational achievement outcomes when compared with their peers across the country. Although the framework recognizes that parents and other primary caregivers always retain the primary responsibility and the most influence and impact on their child's well-being, learning and development, it also acknowledges that parents also need a basic level of support as well as access to core sets of services from governments at various points in the child's early years that must also be adapted to varying circumstances. Next slide. The right from the start framework um, the, is, um, you know, starting with the set of desired outcomes that were identified in the framework shown on this slide. Both departments made seven commitments that m will move us further forward in achieving our goals through innovative and outreach programs and services for families and children, while ensuring that no one is left behind. This next slide, number six, implementation review. The progress on the implementation of the ECD framework was reviewed in 2016-17, looking at evidence and background information from the first three years of the framework implementation. We identified accomplishments, needs, and gaps related to each commitment. The general findings have been 
incorporated into how we plan to implement the framework moving forward. The specific commitment level findings are represented under progress to date accomplishments and gaps in the action plan and are, were used to develop the targets and deliverables. Please note that some identified gaps that may also require additional resources will be addressed through complementary work that is taking place in other contingent areas such as uh, our child and youth mental health mental wellness action plan which is currently under development. Examples of this would include uh, the methods that are to be used for early identification of children exposed to trauma and the interventions um, that are designed for children and families exposed to trauma. So I will pass now to um, my colleague, the, the ADM, Mueller. Thank you, Dr. Corbel. Ms. Mueller. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so if we could look on slide seven, this talks about uh, the early development instrument or EDI as we most commonly refer to it. Uh, just um, uh, to um, let committee know, in 2010 really is when the Office of the Auditor General found that uh, as a department, uh, there was a lack of data to determine the success or programming in our early childhood system. So as a result, we've incorporated uh, EDI. EDI is developed by the Offord Centre for Child Studies at McMaster University, and it was selected as the tool to measure early development and has become, in fact, the standard population-based tool for measure, measuring and monitoring early childhood development across Canada. Uh, EDI is a population-based measure of children's developmental health in five domains. Their emotional maturity, language and cognitive development, physical health and well-being, communication skills and general knowledge, and their social competence. Um, why we, we assess and how we assess, uh, really EDI is like a checklist, a uh, comprehensive checklist, and our kindergarten teachers uh, administer that checklist um, every February. EDI does not diagnose individual children, but it provides a snapshot of the learning readiness of these groups of five-year-old children as they're about to enter our regular uh, grade one program. And how do we share this information? EDI provides information to guide decision making um, and to really know where we need to strengthen programs and services. This information is shared every year with our education authorities. They receive their results and the purpose of that is for themselves to use it uh, for their internal plan planning of programs and supports. Also, of course, both departments uh, use this information and share it uh, to look at our own uh, ways that we can enhance supports for children and families. EDI baseline information has also been shared with the Canadian Institute of uh, Health Information. If we could turn to slide eight. What we do know, uh, based on the results uh, gathered um, over the years, is that currently 38% um, of NWT children are behind um, in one of the domains developmentally. Results reported by EDI indicate areas of development strengths and weaknesses, and uh, what we do know is that it's offering greater insight into the development areas where groups of children are most vulnerable and where they need the most help. EDI reports focus on uh, groups of children who are falling within the lowest 10th percentile and are considered to be vulnerable in one or more of these uh, um, developmental domains. And uh, what EDI also uh, indicates is that uh, this group of children in that 10th percentile represent children whom with uh, cost-effective universal preventative programs are most likely uh, to, make, to have a difference made in their lives with good early childhood intervention. Looking at slide nine, uh, what you can see is that Yellowknife has been showing fairly consistent results over time, whereas in our regional centers and in small communities, we've actually seen vulnerability rates increase. As well, we see that vulnerability in small communities remains uh, much higher than uh, other, um, other communities across the collection years. As a whole, <coughs> vulnerability rates in the Northwest Territories are much higher than our Canadian norms, about 25% higher. And uh, if we could slide then to uh, go to slide uh, uh, 10. Uh, this is really 
Uh, commitment number one, uh, as uh, Dr. Corvo has mentioned, uh, we've committed uh, both departments to really focusing in on seven commitments, and this is the first expected mothers. And Dr. Corvo will now uh, take over. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Dr. Corvo. Thank you. So the, the um, I'll, I'll move right away to uh, the slide number 11, which uh, describes uh, or summarizes the areas of action uh, one to three. Um, the fir first one being uh, related to um, the midwifery services mid and perineal services for so Fort Smith and, and Hay River, as was mentioned by our minister, uh, already have a midwifery-led perineal service model uh, that will continue to provide quality prenatal care, postpartum care, and birthing services. We also have a monitoring and evaluation framework that's been designed for the Hay River program um, that will be implemented in the coming uh, three years. And in the Beaufort Delta region, a maternal care nurse practitioner model was implemented in 2015-16, which increased support to community-based perineal services. This model has improved continuity of care and um, the consistency of care for women in Inuvik and the Beaufort Delta region, successfully reaching previously hard to reach prenatal clients. The Department of Health and Social Services is currently engaging with the public on the design of a territorial midwifery program to increase access to quality perineal care options for NWT women. And uh, finally in this area, the uh, NWT prenatal record form was also revised and standardized for use in all NWT facilities to help identify mothers and families who can benefit from additional <coughs> services. In the areas of action number two, in 2014-15, the department had formalized and standardized its referral process for expectant mothers with addiction issues. However, implementation gaps were identified in the uh, review that we conducted last year. And uh, this will be addressed in the new action plan to better ensure that the needs of women with addictions issues are being met adequately. And the third area of action, the, the LT pregnancy group operated by the Territorial Health and Social Services Authority in Yellowknife, which aims to uh, improve birth experiences and outcomes of pregnant women by providing education and training. The Centering Pregnancy Program is now offered in Yellowknife since December 2015. Work on achieving the baby-friendly designation that um, is meant to facilitate initiation of breastfeeding in our hospitals is ongoing. There's an international initiative. This is an international initiative of the World Health Organization to protect, promote, and support breastfeeding and care for childbearing women, their infants, and families. Funding uh, was allocated to an NGO called Moms, Boobs, and Babies to develop and implement peer pro support training for which has been taking place in Yellowknife, Hay River, and Inuvik in 2016-17. And now the department is um, looking at ways to uh, best approaches to share resources information to all families in the NWT. Uh, slide number 12 uh, is uh, outlining the uh, commitment number two in the uh, areas for action related to uh, early uh, the intervention programming for infants, children, and parents. And uh, the next slide, number 13, uh, summarizes the um, deliverables that have been identified in this area. For area number four, we, uh, you know, the uh, 18th Assembly has made it a priority to, fo to fo uh, uh, has made foster healthy families uh, by focusing on wellness prevention and improved nutrition. The Healthy Family Program is currently available in all regions of the NWT, servicing 16 NWT communities. It is a voluntary home visitation program that supports parents and caregivers with children under five years of age. The department is looking at building on the existing strengths of the program with the goal of expanding its reach beyond the current 16 communities it serves. However, we know that the current program, which is proprietary in nature and somewhat narrowly focused on home visitation is viewed by many as having too rigid training requirements that are limiting participation of smaller communities. 
the goal in reviewing and possibly reframing the LTFAMI program is to move to a more encompassing approach that emphasizes partnerships and is more easily expandable to all communities, large and small. In area uh, of action five, based on the 2014 review entitled Brushing Up on Oral Health, the Department of Health and Social Services is developing an approach to address the following three goals. Improve the quality of oral health programs for all NWT children, implement a population health approach to the promotion of oral health, and implement a continuous quality improvement and accountability system to support oral health programs and services. A regional oral health demonstration project was implemented in 2015-16, and stakeholder engagement to make appropriate changes to the program are being completed. Where we now need to put our focus is on ensuring that consistent postnatal information, programming, and supports, including oral health prevention and promotion, are made available to all families in the NWT. The department will also share consistent postnatal information and supports, including oral health prevention and promotion, breastfeeding and nutrition to all families. Slide 14 uh, outlines the commitments uh, number three and the two areas for action that have been identified in that area. And uh, slide 15 uh, outlines the deliverables that are uh, proposed in the action plan. For area of action six, in 2014-15, the department had completed a one-time assessment of 75% of all NWT children born age five that were born in 20, 2009 using a pilot version of the new NWT Well Child Record form. Following this, an NWT version of the Rourke Baby Record, which is a clinically validated and nationally recognized early childhood health and development assessment tool was implemented across the system in 2015. The new Well Child Record is used by community and public health nurses as well as physicians as part of the delivery of the NWT infant child program in primary care. Work that remains is the full integration of this tool into the electronic medical record to facilitate information sharing and referrals among care providers as well as the ability to track trends. Seeking to make greater use of EDI data, EC has also initiated work on information <coughs> sharing arrangements to allow key stakeholders to make effective use of EDI data, as well as exploring ways to link existing data sources, including broader socioeconomic and program data to the NWT Well Child Report and ED, EDI data to inform planning and evaluation activities. For area of action seven, over the past two years, the department has conducted two evaluations of important early childhood intervention and response services. Rehabilitation services and Tillis speech, which will help guide future plans to improve service delivery in these areas. The principle behind early screening is to give us the ability of early intervention. So this is a critical piece of the service delivery model. During this time, the department has also worked with two health and social services authorities, as well as one indigenous government to develop three early childhood development, early intervention pilot projects using baseline data from EDI, as well as the one-time NWT Well Child Record pilot results to better address regional needs. The three early intervention pilots projects are showing early signs of success. Slide 16, commitment four. Uh, includes two areas for action, eight and nine, which are the, uh, and then on uh, the next slide, 17, we have uh, outlined the um, commitments or deliverables that are made in this area, which is to, to coordinate, um, or is that, Rita, is that you? Yeah. Okay, so I'll pass it on to Rita Mueller. <laughs> thank Sorry. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> My apologies. On a roll, on a roll. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Cooper. <coughs> Ms. Mueller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, if we're on slide 17, um, over the past three years, the Department of Health um, and Social Services has supported the development of community wellness plans. 
and uh, some of these plans in identified at the community level um, uh, priorities in early childhood, uh, having different goals around that. And so uh, the two departments are now working together to increase early childhood represent, uh, representation in the development of those community wellness plans, and in particular at the community healthy living fairs. Um, uh, because this is really uh, one of the ways that we can strengthen awareness of the existing early childhood programs and services that uh, are currently available in communities and across the territories, as well as help us better identify the needs uh, specific within communities. As well, under the, the, these areas of action eight and nine, um, the department uh, has been supporting 20 junior kindergarten um, uh, programs being offered in 20 communities, and we are moving towards the territorial implementation of JK in the remaining 13 communities uh, beginning in the 17th, 18th school year. As part of the engagement, um, in order to know how to best implement and what, what areas we had to concentrate on, the department has included uh, all education authorities in webinars and teleconferences, face-to-face -face meetings with our key stakeholders, in particular school principals and our current JKK teachers, um, as well as our licensed early childhood operators to find out uh, how we could best implement JK. The Department of Health and Social Services, as well as ECE, are also committed to ensuring culturally respective health care uh, environment by planning and implementing initiatives to combat structural racism and to develop culturally competent and safe uh, uh, approaches and, and programs for, for all individuals. If we can move to slide 18. This is really focused on area um, for action nine. And as we know, uh, information sharing is essential to supporting an integrated care model. Um, through our Education Renewal Action Plan, as well as uh, Health um, and our department, we formed a working group to move forward on the information sharing piece necessary to really truly develop an integrated early childhood services delivery model. We are currently working with the Department of Justice as well to uh, find a way to have a common consent form for parents and uh, of young children so that we could have information sharing agreements that would uh, allow health and uh, education to better share information about children. ECE and uh, the Department of Health and Social Services are also working together to determine how an integrated services approach to support children, especially those who are most vulnerable, at risk, or have specific needs. Uh, and so we continue to do that work and try to strengthen it. Um, as well, we heard from, uh, in the work that we've done today, we heard from our early childhood uh, licensed centers and family day homes that one of the areas our department needed to work on was uh, increasing uh, the subsidy rates that we provided to our licensed programs. And as a result of that, effective October 1st, 2016, the department is providing significant increases to infant rates uh, for children zero to two years old. And we've also increased uh, in a more moderate way, increases to funding for those uh, preschool sp spaces for, so for children from two to four. We've also uh, worked to rebrand the Healthy Children Initiative, uh, and it's now uh, being called the Early Childhood Intervention Program. And this is really about helping our licensed programs focus on supporting children who are at risk, vulnerable, or already in early years showing that they may have some specific needs. Uh, one of the areas that we will continue to be committed to strengthening is the actual training of the staff in our licensed early childhood centers to know how to best work with those children. If we move to slide 19, this commitment five um, is about the promotion, awareness, and education initiatives related to early childhood development, which is available to all families and communities. And under this commitment, there's two um, areas for action. On slide 20, uh, outlines the three uh, deliverables um, uh, for the next three years. And, um, and uh, really the emphasis is supporting our NWT parents and caregivers with the right information, tools, and options that they need uh, you know, in their role as the primary caregiver. In the evaluation process that both our departments did uh, to the work done to date over the past three years, what we found out 
through our iPad uh, mini um, evaluation as well as telespeech evaluation is that parents are most interested in information about developmental milestones of their children. They want more information about nutrition and health, and they're very interested in any kind of information related to culture and language development for their children. We uh, have uh, since um, the beginning of the iPad minis, we also heard that we needed to provide our NWT libraries uh, with this kind of um, uh, information as well. And so since 2016-17, uh, we have included our NWT libraries as providing uh, this information service. ECE has also developed self-regulation uh, materials for distribution to all schools and to our licensed early childhood centers. And we will continue to work with the Department of Health to enhance the website called Right From The Start to ensure that early childhood information is available to parents, families, and licensed early childhood programs, and that this information is relevant and up to date. And uh, we've had a lot of uh, uptake on our Right From The Start website and our Facebook uh, pages. As well, uh, Health is conducting um, an analysis of the early results of their early childhood intervention pilot projects, and this will help identify knowledge and information gaps uh, where hopefully existing communication tools will be built around uh, to make sure that uh, parents are getting what they need. And uh, health is also conducting a health promotion campaign. And uh, the last point uh, under this section is that uh, ECE continues to partner with Aurora College to deliver a dual credit senior secondary high school early childhood development course. Uh, this semester is our second um, a pilot of this here in Yellowknife between both high schools. I should actually say Commission Scholar was also invited their students, so three boards. And uh, what this provides our high school students with is the opportunity to be expo exposed to early childhood um, uh, philosophies and um, the beginning of understanding early childhood development much more, where they would not only get high school credits, but they actually will get Aurora College credits upon completion of that course. If we could move to slide 21. This is outlining commitment six. And uh, commitment six is uh, dedicated to access to highly quality, affordable early learning programs and child care services and making sure that they're enhanced. And there's five actions uh, or areas of action identified under this particular commitment. If we look on uh, slide 22, the deliverables under this uh, commitment are outlined. And uh, ECE is continuing to work with our education authorities to address infrastructure needs that uh, they may need as a result of the territorial implementation of junior kindergarten beginning in 2017-18. And we've already worked with the 20 communities that do have uh, junior kindergarten and, and those infrastructure um, needs were already identified and, and many completed, but this will uh, continue this work for the 13 remaining communities. As well, uh, we know through the feasibility study of universal affordable daycare in the Northwest Territories from 2015 that um, one of the things that we needed to do was there was a lack of some basic resources for our licensed uh, daycare and day home operators. And as a result, uh, what was highlighted as something that we should be doing is developing a curriculum guide and program materials for our licensed programs. And so that is what we uh, are going to be doing. We are going to be developing what we're calling an early learning framework to guide programming for children specific to zero to three years old. Uh, this is something that is being done across Canada as well. And uh, as well in working with uh, the Department of Health, uh, we are going uh, working on making sure that all of our licensed programs have access to already established online um, Aboriginal cultural awareness training modules. So for example, that the GNWT uh, staff are, um, have available to them, we're making those available as well to the staff in our licensed early childhood centers to help support their ongoing training. If we move to slide 23, uh, again, continued deliverables under, under these actions. And uh, one of the things that uh, we are developing right now is a competency-based assessment process. Um, 
And the idea of this, it will provide a mechanism for the department to recognize the prior learning and experience of all of our early childhood staff in our licensed programs, both daycares and family day homes, so that they can meet the requirements under the NWT Child Care Act. Uh, this this uh, process is currently in development. And uh, we will continue to work to support uh, improved quality licensed early childhood education programs through a variety of ways, including training opportunities, um, providing free webinar and courses to our licensed early childhood staff, as we already have, um, having symposiums where all licensed early childhood program staff are invited to uh, attend, um, ensuring that we continue um, introducing all licensed programs to a national standard of, of quality of early childhood programs, and we've already begun training staff in this regard, providing scholarships to encourage uh, Northerners who are interested in pursuing early childhood diploma degree or master's degree programs in early childhood uh, to do so, and also providing incentives through our early childhood development grant program for our licensed early childhood staff to continue on with their professional development and training. And uh, now, Mr. Chair, uh, Dr. Corvo is going to take over the remaining slides. Thank you, Ms. Mule. Dr. Corvo. And so the uh, final uh, uh, commitment was around uh, monitoring, reporting, and ongoing evaluation uh, of the uh, framework uh, implementation. And on uh, slide 25, uh, we outlined the deliverables in this area uh, related to a monitoring and evaluation plan, which is uh, it's ongoing over the life of the 10-year framework, and it was designed to provide a continuous quality improvement approach that guides evidence-based decision-making for program and service delivery. However, the findings from the ECD framework review done in 2016-17 were also used to inform and make some adjustments to the MEE plan so that it would better enable us to support on understanding of ECD program success at the system level and explore questions around relevance, effectiveness, and efficiency. In area of action 18, the uh, department is examining ways to improve electronic data capture, management, and population level analysis capability to provide information that informs frontline clinical decision making. This renewed focus on ana analytics will allow us to better track trends and gaps in services. For example, if an indicator is trending downward in one community or region, it would allow the Department and the uh, Northwest Territories Health and Social Services uh, Authority to redeploy resources more rapidly to address a situation. For example, if we had uh, a sh you know, an increase in children with hearing or speech language deficits before these children reached the school system. And finally, uh, the last uh, area for action and commitment is that uh, we plan to release, a, at the end of this uh, three-year action plan, a, a health status report for children aged 0 to 5 as an additional means of reporting on progress towards the early childhood development outcomes, which are identified in the right from the start early childhood framework. Uh, and this uh, would be work that we would do jointly, the two departments. So in, in conclusion, uh, both departments are committed to continue to work together to implement um, the, uh, the framework and um, to ensure that the actions outlined in this three-year action plan will benefit the children and families of the NWT. Thank you, Dr. Kovro. Um, being reflective of the time, and Minister Abernathy has to get out of here. One, um, if we can uh, just ask one question each, and then we can then try to move on. Any questions for the ministers? Okay, I guess I'll start. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Right, so the, uh, I, I saw in there that um, this action plan is supposed to be using, uh, at some point, integrated case management approach. Um, that's Department of Justice did the same thing. So what did you learn from how the Department of Justice handles integrated case management? 
How are you going to apply it here? Thank Thanks, you. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. O'Reilly. Minister Abernathy. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, in that uh, in that pilot, uh, a number of departments are involved, including Department of Health and Social Services. It's still uh, th that pilot is still underway, uh, and we we intend to evaluate it and monitor it going forward, so that we can answer that exact question. Uh, but as far as an answer for for today, I, I think we need the the time to actually have it roll out and and get the results and see what type of uh, lessons we can learn. But uh, in short. The departments working together will provide better results than, than working independently in silos competing for resources and programs. Uh, but give us a bit of time for, for that pilot to, to roll out and uh, so that we can evaluate the results accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Abernathy. Mr. McNeil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my question is just using and looking at page number nine here on this EDI progress and benchmarks and targets um, with your three-year action plan, are, are you, are you going to include like a midterm review or a mid-year progress to see if you're on target for some of these uh, actions and deliverable targets? Thank you, Mr. McNeely. Minister Moses. Uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> and those EDI results have been very uh, useful and helpful in terms of uh, the work that we're doing around early childhood programming. And uh, obviously, we will be measuring and evaluating using those results uh, moving forward. And uh, like I said, they've been very helpful in uh, the current planning that we're doing today. So uh, definitely be using those. Thank you, Minister Moses. Minister Abernathy. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, the presentation went through in some detail. Uh, the document that was provided to committee previously, the, the draft action plan for 2017-2020, uh, uh, and that action plan outlines, uh, if you do go to the plan, uh, areas for action, uh, progress to date, accomplishments and gaps, and work to complete. Um, in there, you'll notice that there's some annual assessments uh, through work of, of children and whatnot. So we're trying to keep on top of the data to make sure that we have some continual information moving forward. This plan, if approved, we will assess it uh, ongoing in each of the areas to make sure that we are making progress. We're happy to report back to committee uh, on where we are uh, moving forward. Thank you, Minister Abernathy. Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to ask the Minister Education, how has the Department assessed its program to distribute iPad minis to date and what were its findings and why was the Department elected to continue this program? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Ms. Mueller. Mr. Chair, so uh, we did an evaluation of the first 100 um, iPads that had been um, delivered and given to parents and asked them to participate in quite a, um, a detailed uh, um, survey, both interview or they could do it a variety of ways. And so what we found is in particular small community parents uh, loved it. And, uh, and uh, they just said that um, they, they found it was one stop to so, so much information that they needed. Uh, so it was really uh, resounding from all small community parents that they uh, liked it and used it. And uh, from there, actually, that's where we found out that parents, those including regional uh, center parents and Yellowknife parents, also wanted more information about nutrition, uh, proper clothing for babies in the winter, um, and that they, uh, they really wanted as much uh, information on the iPad that led them to other areas where they could get more information. And so that's what we've tried to do. And based on that 100 um, people's feedback, we have... Uh, added more information to our iPads. Uh, the reason we're still continuing to distribute it is because we had that many iPads. And so we predicted uh, that we are going to be able to continue uh, delivering those iPads to interested parents uh, for all of 17, 18, and maybe actually into 18, 19 before we run out. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Ms. Green. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, on page 9 of the presentation, there is a chart that shows uh, the change over time in um, EDI results. And um, it's notable that, that 
all of the indicators have gone up, meaning that there is a greater need, but especially in the small communities. So we've had uh, some discussion as a committee about how useful EDI is. We've heard fr from people on both sides. But uh, I am, I, I, I guess I, I have new questions now that I look at this chart about how reliable the results are given the great fluctuations, especially in the small community results. Can the minister speak to that, please? Thank you, Ms. Green. Ms. Mule. <clears throat> um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we don't really have a clear understanding right now of what might, may have accounted for that uh, considerable dip that you see in 2015 in small communities. Uh, the small jurisdiction, in small jurisdictions like ours, normal year-to-year -year variation in student populations can result in, in big differences, especially in small, our smallest communities. According, uh, accordingly, the level of uncertainty in our vulnerability rate gets bigger as the number of children in an area gets smaller. Uh, we have worked with the Offord Centre to look at this dip and to see if they, you know, I mean, they, they are working with all jurisdictions in Canada uh, with this kind of work. And basically they're saying you need to see what happens over a longer period of time to see if, if in fact, um, that is just a blip in, in one year, uh, single year, uh, rather than looking at trends, uh, longer term trends. So that's, that explains that for 2015. Thank you, Ms. Mueller. Mr. McNeil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I thank my colleague for bringing that page up again here on number nine on the drastic increase here in the smaller communities. Is there uh, some, some language in here on the progression and consultation with this material with the regional DEAs? I, I know you have your regional teacher conferences and so on. But what about the DEA itself in, in, in the communities? Do they get together and have some dialogue on this and, and uh, set their goals by the end of the year to see if these targets are going to be achieved or, in this case, lowered from 65 percent? Might as well say 66 percent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. McMillan. Minister Moses. Thank you, and uh, as I mentioned, we're in our sixth year of uh, collecting data right now with uh, EDI results, and uh, it's definitely helped us in our planning uh, that we're doing within the education system and, and shows a really strong um, effort into why we need to make some changes within uh, the education system and promoting some of our uh, education renewal initiatives that we're doing, uh, currently doing right now. Uh, we definitely share this with all our stakeholders, especially the uh, uh, teachers and those that are providing services to our most vulnerable. And uh, small communities is definitely a, a big uh, concern and we need to find out ways we can uh, continue to support our, our schools in the small communities. Uh, maybe more, a little bit more detail I'll, I'll ask Ms. Uh, Mueller. Thank you, Minister Moses. Ms. Mueller. Uh, so to answer um, uh, the MLA's question, uh, it is shared, as the Minister mentioned, with all of our education authorities every single year, mm -hmm. their information. Um, for their region, and uh, it's meant for them then to look at and see are there things that they can help influence uh, areas of programming, for example, to strengthen it within their kindergarten programming. Uh, that's, that's what it's meant for. We also uh, share this and talk about it at the uh, regular, about every two months we meet with the, our department meets with all the superintendents of education, and we regularly look at this information and as a whole group. Uh, to look at how we collaborate and, and areas that we, we can improve. And the other thing that I think is really important, all of our uh, kindergarten teachers are formally trained on how to uh, use this tool. In fact, they can't use it unless they are trained. And that training is provided by the offered center themselves. And so uh, that training usually happens in November of each year. And uh, this upcoming November, we will continue to do that where all of our uh, JKK teachers are brought together and take a two-day training on administering the EDI, understanding what EDI is about, uh, and what that means for them as teachers. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Ms. Green. Just, uh, Mr. Minister Abernathy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, it's also, I think, important to recognize that Health and Social Services uses the data from, from, this, from the EDIs as well, and it helps inform some of the, the programming and some of the services we're providing to choose before children before they even, even get to, to kindergarten. So the data is there for, for a wide range of reasons. 
Thank you, Minister Abernathy. Dr. Corbo. Yeah, I just wanted to add to this uh, that, in a way, uh, we know from the literature that probably uh, two-thirds of those deficits identified in EDI would, would have been preventable if we had earlier intervention. So the implementation of our screening tool and the standard approach to referrals is really the only way we're going to improve is, is to, you know, to go further uh, or earlier in the, the life of the, the children to provide those supports to, to reduce uh, those rates. I mean, the, the school system can compensate to a point when they arrive there, but we should find out about these deficits a lot earlier and, um, and intervene uh, at that point. So, and that's the way we're going to improve EDI over time. So we need, we need to share that data because they're, in a way they're telling us something that you know, our system needs to work on. Thank you, Dr. Perro. Minister Abernathy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and, and we are working on that. I think that's clearly articulated within the draft plan that's in front of you. I do have to go to Cabinet House Strategy. I really apologize. I don't really want to run out of this meeting, uh, but I will ask that the deputy be allowed to come to the table. She could certainly answer any technical or, or program-specific questions. Political questions can be uh, to Minister Moses, who could answer those. If he can't, I'll certainly take the questions and uh, get you responses back through the deputy. But I, I do have to leave. I really do apologize for having to leave before we're done. All right. Okay. Um, Ms. Lancy, uh, we'll probably do a couple more questions, and then we may have to send some letters. Yeah, I yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Green. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, I, I recognize that a small population creates uh, big variability in, in some of these instruments, but I'm concerned about its reliability and especially that it's the basis of investing millions of dollars into, uh, into different approaches uh, within um, both early childhood and the education system. So I, I would like to understand uh, what is the margin of error on this uh, on this instrument, and what alternatives were considered to uh, using this? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. <coughs> Deputy Delancey. Deputy Minister Delancey. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I can answer the question about the margin of error, and perhaps we can go back to Ms. Mueller. But I think it's important to note that as part of our first three-year action plan, the Department of Health and Social Services undertook a one-time baseline assessment of all the children that were age four that were just going into kindergarten in 2015. Um, so very comprehensive analysis, and that was part of the initiative to develop the well child record. And the results from that baseline assessment validated the, the EDI. It was really quite stun stunning how closely those two independent analyses showed the same results, the same challenges in the same regions. In our department, we actually used that data to decide where to target the investments for our three pilot projects on early child inter intervention. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Chair. I thought that might be helpful. Thank you, Deputy Minister Nuance. Minister Moses. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, I believe all members uh, would have received a, a letter from Dr. Janus uh, in December, I believe, on some of the, uh, the validation of uh, the EDI itself. And um, our, our department would be willing to, to work with uh, Dr. Janus and see if she can come up and do a more thorough presentation to the committee if they, they like, but that could be something that you can address in your, your letter after the presentation. Yeah. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. Bolio. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question for the Minister of Education. If we do, does the department uh, feel that will make a difference in the EDI results uh, by having the kids in school one year earlier? Thank you, Mr. Bolio. Minister Moses. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, with some of our communities where we've had junior kindergarten, in the, uh, in the communities. Uh, and we did a presentation to, to Kibbity not too long ago where we seen uh, students who went through junior kindergarten enter the, uh, into uh, kindergarten, the developmentally uh, enhancements. They were more readily uh, ready, ready for school uh, going through junior kindergarten where students that didn't go through an early childhood program uh, didn't have that opportunity. So 
the uh, the um, developmental readiness was was pretty uh, uh, was shown for students going into uh, kindergarten. Thank you, Minister Moses. Mr. O'Reilly. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just back to slide nine. Um, if I was really cynical, uh, I would say that the action plan last time didn't work very well. If the if the the, the, the best measure is EDI, uh, um, it, it, it's worse whether you're in Yellowknife regional communities or small centers. Um, it's not not good. Um, but uh, so I get back to some of the the, the, the concerns that uh, Ms. Green mentioned. But uh, what I what I sense here is that this is a very uh, um, data heavy uh, tracking, uh, a lot of tracking of performance and so on of our of, of our kids, and uh, all of that data and tracking and, and so on. How is it actually going to change what we do and change outcomes? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Riley. Minister Moses. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And this is a 10-year uh, framework, and uh, the more investments that we do sooner on. Uh, the better results we'll, we'll start seeing eventually. And I think uh, during the presentation, you heard a lot of the things that the Department of Health and Social Services is doing in this area, as well as the uh, Department of Education, Culture and Employment. So we're taking those steps so we can start seeing uh, some of these figures drop. But it is definitely helping us in terms of uh, where we're making our investments and uh, both within uh, all departments. But it is a 10-year framework, and, and we do need to uh, start taking this into as a priority. Thank, Thank you, you, Minister Moses. Any follow Ms. Green. Yeah, I want to go to the point that uh, my colleague just raised again about uh, this data collection, but from a different uh, area. There's, there's a lot of data collection contemplated in this plan, and um, <clears throat> I'm wondering uh, what you... You have all the technology and sharing agreements and other mechanical pieces in place to ensure that the data will be um, uh, collected and, and analyzed in a, in a timely way that respects privacy and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Minister Moses. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And everything that we do, like we talked about the integrated case management, uh, the consent forms and privacy uh, is always a, a, a priority of this, this government and the departments. Thank you, Minister Moses. Any, oh, Dr. Corbell? Well, I, I, you know, I, I think it's important to point out that, you know, in the first uh, three years, we, yes, we did spend a lot of time trying to shore mm -hmm. up our ability to collect data and analyze it, and we're still planning to do some of that because until we have th that information, it's really hard to target your investments properly. And like I, I mentioned earlier, really, uh, uh, it's, it's the ability to detect early on, earlier on, uh, children who have uh, correctable needs and then addressing them when they're two and three years old, not to wait until they're, you know, entered the, the school. And so I think we're just getting at the cuffs right now of being able to provide the feedback to the front line because that's what we couldn't do in the past. It was to give that, that, retro, that feedback to the physicians and the nurses and the public health uh, nurses on the front line to, to say, here's the, where the, they are showing you, you need to put more effort and, and redirect. The, and now that we have also the Northwest Territories Health and Social Services Authority, uh, we have the uh, ability to expand uh, some of our programs to reach uh, further out. And we're strengthening our partnerships with uh, the indigenous groups. Uh, so the pilot project done with IRC, for example, is a really good example of something that we can't just do on our own. So we have to partner with uh, people who have leadership at the community level to implement some of those actions. But um, the, the approach in the past was we, know we, we knew there was a problem. Uh, the first 10 years of implementation of the previous action plan, we didn't have any data. It was really all shots in the dark, and we, don't, we couldn't really show a lot of progress. This time, we wanted to do it differently. Thank you, Dr. Corwin. Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just under the early childhood development, you mentioned October 1st will be the increased funding for zero to two. I was just wondering if we could Make that a little sooner, maybe September. Okay. 
because it said 2017, but... Uh... Okay, Mr. Blake, you finished your question? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blake. Minister Moses. Yeah, there might have been a typo, I'm not sure, but that uh, took effect uh, October 1st, 2016. And uh, some of the changes we made, it's almost nearly double for the infant uh, child care spaces. So we made some really big improvements for early childhood uh, programming. Thank you, Minister Moses. <clears throat> Any other questions for the minister or committee? Okay, uh, at this point in time, being respectful of the time, uh, I'd like to thank the minister and the staff, and Ms. Delancey and uh, Dr. Corvo for showing up uh, and presenting, and Minister Abernathy. Do you have any closing comments, Minister Moses, before we adjourn the meeting? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And on behalf of both departments of Health and Social Services, as well as the Department of Education, Culture, and Employment, I want to thank you, Mr. Chair, and committee members for the opportunity for our two departments to present you to the uh, proposed three-year Early Childhood Development Action Plan for 2017-2020. Uh, it's obvious, obvious from today's feedback and questions that committee members uh, that we're all strong advocates for a continued government focus and priority on improving our territory's early childhood services and programs. Uh, we do look forward to receiving feedback uh, through a letter uh, from, from today's meeting. Uh, Minister Abernathy and I are extremely proud of the work that both our departments have done over the past three years. And uh, our staff are excited about this work as well and committed to ensuring that stakeholders are involved at all levels. Uh, we know that we are on the right path and we believe that uh, through these initiatives and actions that we are and will continue to make a positive difference and improve the quality of life for our youngest residents and their families. Uh, with that, Masi Cho, and thank you. Thank you, Minister Moses. I'd also for so I thank Ms. Mueller as well, since I recognize all the other three at the table. So thank you very much, and we'll briefly adjourn. And our committee, if you can just hold a second, one sec. Yeah, thank you.